Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mutati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. A presidential tenure is like the duration of an exam paper. A presidential tenure is like a duration of an exam paper. When you hear people complain about the presidential tenure, when you hear a president or any leader complain about the presidential tenure being too short or not being enough, just know Nabafirwa. Remember, People who complain about the duration of an exam paper are always the people who did not study. They are always the people who are not prepared. Notice, people who are prepared for the exam, they are always ready to write the paper, finish it in the sm smallest time frame. It's always those bapenda milata, those who are always thinking, I exam class, I don't malata. Those are the ones who always complain to say, ah, this paper is only one hour, 30 minutes. At least in Katiangarako, two hours. Abako Pueri in Gefe Bachita, they always find excuses. Not blaming themselves. They'll blame everybody else. They'll blame the system. They'll blame everyone else except them. I just saw a, 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 a what's this, an article. I read an article that you Kenyo Kukumuluku. But President Valle Fox to increase presidential tenure. This has become very normal for many presidents or many governments on the African continent doing this or even speaking about it. Believe me, what we should be doing is reducing presidential tenures so that we can always shuffle or change bad governance in the quickest time possible. Imagine having a terrible leader for seven years. Think about that for a second. Then that terrible leader maybe even bounces back into power, finds ways to weasel themselves into a second term. Can you imagine having a useless leader for 14 years? You understand? So the presidential tenure being short is for the protection of the country. In case you have a bad character in office, you can get rid of that bad character in the quickest time possible. That way you don't have to suffer for too long. Ku US presidential tenure, tenure ni four years. Four years. Kuno ni five. They have an extra one year. In other countries, now bakweleka seven years. That means now you have to deal with that person. If they are a terrible leader, pray they are a good leader. But guess what? Good leaders never increase their presidential tenures. They never even dream of it. You know why? Because leadership is a burden. Leadership is not something you sought after. Leadership is what people bestow on you. They just wake you up, boy, you seem to have the, the, the qualities of a good leader. Be a leader. Believe me, most of the best leaders that have ever existed in human history, whether kings or whatever, it's those who never wanted to be kings or leaders in the first place. They are the ones who become, who turn out to be the best leaders of all time. You should be worried about these who will do anything, who will fight tooth and nail to hold on to power, to get into power. Those are the ones you should be worried about. We should be reducing our presidential tenure. I would actually call every country in the world, every democratic country, should reduce their presidential tenure to four years. Four years, that's a lot to make a difference. I mean, let them not lie to you that we are working, we are doing so many things, they need more time. No. We are not building the, the Tower of Babel here, where we need thousands of years to have one leader to do one thing. It just shows incompetence and lackluster behavior. Otherwise, we shouldn't be increasing anything. We should actually be reducing so that we get rid of bad characters in the quickest time possible. Good leaders never ask for more time. 
it is always these vikopo who are always wanting to ask for more time why because exam na eva kosela they were not prepared inendela ndakofi otherwise africa we have a long way to go god bless you know it has come to my attention that bali has three steps that he uses to exempt himself from all blame and accountability and we need to talk about it yes this is off topic with karas i'm trying something different it's a new month we can't always be talking about ama simps and ama sololas we can do better right yeah uh, and please i'm not attacking the president mwinkaka i'm as broke as a village church mouse on a tuesday i have nothing absolutely nothing except this voice uh, which i hope nobody will take from me let's talk about it number one bali uses this strategy to exempt himself from all blame and accountability he blames the previous regime all oh, the previous regime overborrowed they stole they were thugs they were thieves they were a criminal gang so on and so forth yada 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 he's right but at the end of the day tell us something we don't know bali tell us something we zambians don't know because what you're telling us is old news it's the reason you're president now right i mean look let's not act like bali wasn't happy that pf messed up because had pf done so well he wouldn't be president today so one man's loss was his win right so it shouldn't he shouldn't put it out like it didn't turn out great for him that pf messed up so bali you can't use that excuse anymore it's just not working okay number two the strategy Bali uses to exempt himself from all accountability and blame. He blames his own people. He'll blame his ministers, I'm a PS, government officials, so on and so forth, yada, yada. He'll say things like, oh, they're not working as they're supposed to do this, they're supposed to do that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's true. But Bali, you are the coach. You picked the starting 11. You are the coach. When the players are not playing well, you substitute them. Not Mwambo kubasesha. Umuntu wali ku defense Mwambika ku number nine. Ambo kufiru okulonga pa go. Then you complain that this player is not good. Well, I don't know, Bali. You've been in opposition for the longest time than any other pres sitting president we've ever had in this country. You should have known each and every player's weaknesses and strengths. Kwaliva fio kushbat uyu kutia teapa, uyu tetia teapa. We believed you knew all this. You had this all figured out. You shouldn't be having these problems of governance at this point when people are not following your instructions. It just doesn't sit very well. It can't be used as an excuse, Bali. You can do better. Number three, a strategy Bali uses to exempt himself from all accountability and blame. He blames you. Yes, you watching this. You, the Zambian, yes. He blames the Zambians. He will say things like, you, we, we need to work hard. Zambians, you need to work hard. You're not working hard enough. Or he will use things, he will gaslight us saying, hey, Mwema Zambians, you like to complain. Ah, uh, Bali, that's what people do when you're not doing what you had promised them. They complain. Look, Bali gaslights us. For those that may not know what gaslighting is, gaslighting is questioning you questioning your sanity you understand for example i slap you naktobo lupi then you react ah you why did you slap me then i tell you ah boy when i relax nichani pressure yako ewe nichani but i'm the one who slapped you you have the right to react so bali whenever we react he tries to make it look like we are the problem we are the problem for reacting not him but at the end of the day he won because people reacted he's president today because people reacted People who always react. Simple as pie. So at the end of the day, when he's blaming Zambians or telling Zambians, you need to work hard enough, he puts it like the reason the economy is failing is because we are not working hard enough. But everybody knows people have been working hard since, since the dawn of time. Imagine a lady that wakes up at four in the morning. At five, she leaves the house to go buy tomatoes, kusoweto, buy amkuchita order. By seven, eight hours, she's by the roadside. In the olden days, she used to have at least 30, 40 customers per day. These days, she has 11 customers per day. She knocks off at 20 hours, bamona 21. Only to tell her she's not working hard enough. I mean, she would be very offended. And many people would be very offended. Like, how much work do you want her to do? What, she has to start knocking off at zero one? Is that even safe? 
Now, that's just an example I'm giving you. What I'm saying is, people have always worked hard. There are people who've worked hard their entire life. But when they look at how things were before and how things are, they're like, mm -mm. I used to put the same effort in the past. I used to get results. But with the same effort I used to use in the past, I'm not getting the same results. What is going on? That's what people are complaining about. You dig? At the end of the day, <sighs> Bali needs to pull up his socks. He's, wait, today is August. Bali has depleted 60% of his bundle. Question is, what did he use it for? Well, I seriously can't wait to hear what kind of promises Bali is going to have for us next year, Mukampen season. I mean, we all know he can't sing the old songs. He has to come up with new songs to sing, right? New promises. And it's also going to be weird when he tells us new promises. When he has a serious backlog of unfulfilled promises. Because man, come on, Naimwe. You haven't even fulfilled 1% of the promises from 2021. What are you talking about? It's going to be so hilarious. And the worst part is that Zambians are not going to be forgetful this time because there'll be people reminding them. You see, old elections, the other elections, politicians used to get away with telling people promises, knowing very well that five years from now, these people would have forgotten. But up at the 2021 elections, everything was kept on record. Every time a politician says one thing, they'll just be pulling receipts and say, hey, yo, bro, in 2021, you said this. You never accomplished it in your tenure. So what are you talking about? So he really, really has a tough spot, you know? But I shouldn't underestimate this man. I mean, you, don't, you can't underestimate anyone. I'm sure he's found a new formula of promises that most Zambians are just going to gush over and we're like, oh, okay, you know what? Dada, these new promises are fire. And we're just giving you that vote, man. Because it's going to be very funny, you know? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we'll see what's going to go down. Happy Sunday. Deuce. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.